Hello and welcome to another one of those videos where I talk about what Johan is talking about in the Tinto Talks. And specifically we're looking at what Johan is saying in the comment section beneath all of the uh, dev diaries. Because there's a whole lot of really good info in there and some stuff that are just pretty exciting. So uh, let us get into it. First of all, we have here someone asking to keep the dimmy icon. That is this doodad right here. Uh, basically, they're placeholder stuff. Does control have a minimum value? Yes, 0%. So you can have absolutely no control whatsoever over your province. Um, which is going to be something uh, like if it is an exclave like Philadelphia, as uh, was previously mentioned. Go and check out the previous video where I talk about, uh, I think I use that specific example as well. Uh, this guy imagines that this increases the value of having subjects who have their own capitals uh, to control areas from. So basically this control system uh, where you can't control things, you know, very far away, this pr proximity um, system um, makes having vassals who will have their own center of proximity are quite valuable and yeah especially in the early game when proximity range is far smaller thanks for the tinto talk but did west sweden really have such a low control uh so johan saying that they should add eric's gata as a road which is literally eric's road um gata is road um so uh, moving on can control sort of behave like eu4 autonomy where you can consciously reduce your control in a location in exchange for less unrest no um there are different mechanics for that okay uh how can proximity be made faster roads and canals can they be built or techs so we know that there's a road system from the dev diary itself uh but also there are techs that improve most of it as well so uh, i do kind of feel like this implies a new kind of tech system and i know i'm probably once again reading far more into a string of words than i really should be but at the same time uh unless this is a case of you know uh my admin tech is gone from 13 to 14 and one of the things i get for that is roads two percent more efficient with proximity stuff then I don't know, I, I don't see that being the case. Um, what I'm thinking of is something along the lines of Imperator's system, where, sure, we have this um, sequential tech system, you know, going one, two, three, four, blah, blah, blah. But then, alongside, there would be some kind of inventions, and one of those inventions could potentially be something along the lines of, um, my roads are better now, or I have... Uh, you know, tem not temporary, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, every so often there is a stable with fresh horses, so communication can, you know, move from this ho stable to the next stable and continually having fresh horses, so communication fast. You know, something like that you know, uh, could, uh, could certainly be something to look out for. Of course, we'll learn about tech in a future diary. Can cities be reduced to towns or completely wiped out? Yes, they can in fact be depopulated. And this was something that really kind of hurt quite a lot in Imperata. If you had your sexy metropolis get sieged, you could lose incredibly many pops uh, under the right circumstances. Um, say the, the person sieging it has bonuses to the amount of slaves they took, for example. What happens if a, con a territory is an exclave? like Philadelphia. Uh, will it have any control at all without a bailiff or just a big penalty? With no bailiff or similar, implying there are other things, I don't didn't mean to do that, um, then yes, uh, you will in fact uh, have no control. All right, apologies for that. Um, yeah, no control there. Very surprised the sailors weren't removed. So again, if we go back to the dev diary, uh, we can see here monthly sailors minus 43%. Sailors, bit of a controversial issue in EU4. Not a, not a lot of people like them. I kind of do. Uh, I, I've grown to enjoy them. Uh, but they uh, work differently than in EU4, which is probably definitely a good thing. I feel like that's kind of just like... Well, obviously they do, because we have a pop system now, so your sailors actually have to come from somewhere. The population. Makes sense. Or someone else's population, if you're a fan of, um... Oh, what's the thing? What's it called? Impressment? If you're a fan of Impressment, then, uh, you know, you can get someone else's population. 
Uh, high control always being good. Uh, uh, this guy asking if low control benefits the country in some way, like with estate, wealth, etc. Uh, though I do believe we are told later on that uh, any amount of control that you don't have, the estates will actually take the money that you are not earning. So, technically, yes, yes and yes and is is basically is what I'm I'm seeing here. Um, based on another future uh, comment that Johan makes. Uh, more estates are on the table then. Yes, uh, of course we did uh, not have uh, the Dimi estate in when estates were first shown. Uh, this is something that is directly coming from the community. People uh, saying we should have more than just these uh, estates. Uh, we should have things like Cossacks, Dimi, etc. And uh, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm very happy that this system of Tinto Talks is working, right? This is a system where, you know, these very pre-alpha stage elements are being shown to us for our, I guess, critique. Uh, and then changes can be made before they go too far in the system and are incapable of changing it after that, you know? So this is it's good. It's very good. Does wealth that's not tanks become uh, because of lack of control go to the estates? Yes, and this is what I was talking about with uh, the high control always being good. If you want a, a strong estates, um, maybe there is some benefit to having strong estates, and it's not going to be a, a, a game where your entire job is going to be lowering the control of your estates. Um, maybe getting high-powered estates is going to be good for something, and in that situation, maybe high control isn't always 100% good, you know. Uh, now that we finally see some of the North, will Norse mythology exist? Yes, there will be some tiny remnants left. Um, this is not to say there will be a province of Norse, because religion is not handled on the, the provincial or the location or on the map, let's say, um, level anymore. It is purely about pops, and yeah, there will be some uh, Norse-believing uh, pops in... Iceland, certainly in Greenland, certainly in the remnants of Vinland, I would say. Um, also, probably some scattered around in Norway and Sweden. Um, it would not surprise me to see uh, a Norse population there. Uh, and that's awesome. Maybe there will be a, a case where you as Sweden will be able to, you know, uh, re reclaim the old gods and that sort of way. I don't know. We, we haven't... We haven't got any information about how religion plays out on the state level, so we'll we'll find out about that, I guess. Will colonial nations be present in the game? Um, I I feel like this is like kind of obvious, unless people are believing that because we've gone back to thirteen thirty seven that this is not EU five and it's actually a completely new game that ends before the era of colonization. Like I have seen a couple of people mention that as a belief. Um, but I, I am not, I am not sharing that belief. Um, imagine it'd be very difficult to maintain control of locations on different continents. Uh, yes, it's something you actively want to set up, even if you're not forced to. Uh, in this, I think he's talking about things like, we're not forced to build a bailiff on, in Manhattan, when we have colonized there. But, we're gonna actively want to set up a bailiff or something similar, colonial office, colonial government buildings etc something along those lines um because otherwise we're going to have no control over our colonies and you know it's something that we'll want to foster a bit of control there otherwise you end up in like a 1776 situation there's nobody's nobody's a fan of that so there's a dimmy does that mean there are other special estates eventually yes cossacks please uh rajputs Probably, uh, I'm blanking on things because I've played so much Anvenar recently, but um, yeah, more estates. Give me a, my Artificer estate, my Mage's estate, let's go. Uh, he wants to see the HRE map, it's so does everyone, but um, Johan enjoying Voltaire's Nightmare is slightly scary, because <laughs> that's, uh, that's a whole vibe. Like, I, I posted a, a video recently about you should go and try out Voltaire's Nightmare because of, you know, the... You know, this, there's the start date is there. Uh, but yeah, just Voltaire's Nightmare is 
kind of a little bit insane with the level of detail that they go into with the Holy Roman Empire. So if if Johan is liking the Holy Roman Empire in Voltaire's Nightmare, it's um Oof that, that's 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 gonna I I'm here for it, but that's ambition. Uh, the Han is the Hanseatic League a dynamic name for Lubeck, or is it one of those countries not based on owning land, a, a trade league, acting as one country for the purpose of trade? Uh, so it's not a dynamic name for Lubeck, and that's all you'll say. There's there's more here. There is more here, and this is based on this image down here. Hanseatic League, um, so it's something to do with the economy. Um, we'll see at some point... Um, what, what kind of situation we're going to have with them. Are rivers navigatable? No, they are not. No navigable rivers. And, uh, I actually, uh, asked Johan in, on Discord, uh, after this, if, if rivers were going to be movement blocking for armies, and he, he didn't give me any information, uh, unfortunately. Uh, he, he couldn't tell me. Uh, but I'm going to speculate, because that's what I do. Uh, and I'm going to say I think that is going to be the case, that these big rivers will be visible on the map and they will block the movement of your troops. That is, in my opinion, uh, the best case scenario, especially as, you know, we can build roads, maybe we can build bridges. And if we're building bridges, that will be a very kind of awesome way to unlock the movement of armies. Um having your armies having to go to special like crossing points would be so cool especially oh imagine imagine if you have the ability to destroy those bridges oh oh my gosh imagine having the ability to destroy those bridges to deny your enemy like crossing points and so they'll have to do some uh funky system of like transporting their troops piecemeal across a river oh my gosh i'm i'm hyped for what i'm thinking of i don't even know if it's going to be in the game uh, but anyway, uh, on Pops and Estates, will all clergy, regardless of actual religion, belong to the Ulema? Um, all clergy, Christians and Muslims are effectively one block. So for Muslims, only the Muslim clergy belongs to the Ulema. And then I guess um, the Christian clergy is sort of like the Dimmi-ish. Um, but yeah, having only Muslims contribute to the power, I guess, of your uh, religious estate is probably a good idea and it does make sense as well because the estates are not um just this is a group of people in your country it's more a case of this is a group of people with influence and power in your country and if if you've got say a small number of a wrong religion uh they have no political power they're kind of a bit oppressed so they're not gonna have a, an estate just that uh, just makes sense uh, moving on, next page. Um, talking about the uh, cities, uh, moving from a settlement into a town, into a city. Um, hey, this guy hopes that it's not an instant thing, right? That you can't just, like, click a button and your uh, little rural farming village is now a town. Congratulations. Um, but it, it, it's, a, it's a process. It takes several years to upgrade from a town to a city. And that uh, only so it can allow other things, like other, other buildings and such. And I believe there is a population requirement as well on that um so it's not going to be a case of you can just uh instantly you know i want a city here here and here like you're gonna actually have to foster the growth of communities before you can do that uh you can't believe the game is using such an archaic and abstract concept such as manpower when you have a beautiful population system um so manpower 100 percent connected to pops but this is actually something i'm more aligned with alvaro here than i am with johan um, for all the faults that it had, I think Victoria 2's system of, um, not having manpower, but having your troops be directly and intrinsically tied to your population was a fantastic system, and I think it probably could work here as well. I would not, though, say having individual units tied to locations, so while I have you know, population f uh, across my country, uh, this one unit will not reinforce because their home base, let's say, has been completely depopulated. I, I would not go that far. Um, 
but I do think it might be unnecessary to have manpower. Though, again, I'm willing to wait and see what happens with uh, with the manpower or Tinto talk. That I'm, I'm willing to wait and be uh, proven wrong. Um, you're guessing this is instead of autonomy, so control, or is this just another modifier to make it more accurate? Uh, Project Caesar, no autonomy system. Um, I guess control is a replacement for autonomy, which is, it makes sense. Uh, it's basically what people had already guessed. It's certainly what I had guessed. Um, but yeah, confirmed now. Um, some UI that's been shown looks nice, but it's looking kind of bland. And this is not about, you know, oh, there's a, there's a wrong image. This is about like, this is very clean, right? Of course, we have a little bit of like filigree in the corners, but everything looks very clean and not re very thematic to the period. Whereas if you look at something like EU4, then you've got a lot more um, uh, flavorable UI elements. Um, but like I say, UI is placeholder, except the illustrations themselves, which is these like icons and such. So um, yeah, I, I live to see what the future holds for the UI. Will culture and religion uh, affect control, or do they only affect unrest? And does high control mean less chance of unrest, or just more uh, getting more resources? So unrest and control are not directly related, but control can make it easier to reduce unrest. Um, kind of hinting at new ways to reduce unrest other than... Well, I mean, we know there is no, no autonomy, so you can't just click raise autonomy. Um, so there will be some situations where you can lower unrest, troops maybe, uh, but more control will make it easier. Um, is there a bug in the fact that there are two Rigas here? Um, yes. De well, he says it's a bug, but he clarifies later on. Let's let's go to the later on one. But basically, it's um, he's, there's two countries here, both being shortened. Uh, the, the full names are, are something other than just Riga. Um, and they're both being shortened to Riga. Um, is there a maximum control? Uh, it, the range is 0 to 100. Uh, does lower control cause higher chance of rebellion? There's a correlation, but low control itself is not the reason for rebellion. Uh, settlement to town to city is something you control directly. Yes. Uh, there will be more estates than the original five after all. 99.9% .9 chance of the Cossacks coming in. Perfect. Um... And they're going to be doing some more content adding in spring. Very nice. Uh, and there we go. It is two Rigas. The City of Riga and the Archbishopric of Riga. And they're both being shortened to Riga. Uh, two countries having the same name is not ideal. Uh, will the game have slaves? Yes, we already knew that. Uh, why do we need navies when it seems like maritime presence always ticks upwards? Uh, he's patient, but he'd rather have the money and take a couple more years to fill out. Uh, and he'd rather it trended towards an equilibrium, and you had to actively use navies to keep it at 100%. And um, basically, Johan's response is, navies, make it tick up faster, make sure that pirates are dealt with, and make sure you actually have a maritime presence during or after a war. Uh, or, I guess, and after a war. Um, the one that I think is more interesting here is B, make sure pirates are dealt with. Because piracy in EU4, in the current game, is... There's, there's privateers, right, where you can set a fleet of yours on a privateer mission and they'll just steal some ducats um, at a lower efficiency than just trading would. However, you hurt your enemy as well while at peace, so it tends to be fine. However, EU4 used to have something different. It used to have pirates on the map that you had to deal with and kill. And I feel like we might be getting something more similar to the original way that pirates are going to work. Um, dealing with pirates, it's not really a thing in EU4 anymore. It's not something that is so important that it requires a bullet point, you know? Um, however, here it is, so they're going to have more of a presence. Um, and I guess that's, that's, a, that's a, sure, it's a good thing, we'll see. Well, terrain affect control. It affects proximity, which affects control. Uh, is there a way the player or AI can increase food production themselves, or is it mostly attached to the technology and land ownership and land control? So, yes, there are, in fact, some ways. 
Uh, will vassal loyalty and aggr enemy aggressiveness be affected by control and proximity of your lands and neighbor to them? Yes. So having a vassal to exert control over a very, uh, an area that you um, have further away from you is a good idea, especially in the early game, as said earlier. Um, but if you lack control to your vassal, there's going to be some loyalty issues, potentially. Um, so I do really, really, really like this system because, I mean, it, I'm imagining it like I uh, had in Mayo and Taxes. You know, proximity is basically communication efficiency. Um, but I really like this as an anti-blobbing mechanic. Because, sure, you're probably going to be able to blob your heart out as much as you're capable of. But you're not going to be able to administer it all because a lot of it is just going to be too far away. There's so much more internal gardening, I guess. Nation gardening, imagine, um, that you're going to have to do to increase the control you have rather than just uh, click the state button, add full cores, click reduce autonomy, wait until you've got, you know, 0% uh, autonomy. Fantastic. Good job. Aren't you very special? This is not going to be the case anymore. And I don't know about you, but I'm I, I'm so for that. It's, uh, yeah. It's probably going to be the most pillarful. That's now a word. Don't worry about it. Uh, element of EU5. Um, the, the thing that makes it play differently, in my opinion. Are there any incidental advantages to having no control? Sorry, low control. No, not really. Um... This is uh, talking more about being able to build things in locations. We're not getting onto buildings just yet. He hopes lower taxation doesn't just mean money disappearing into the void, but rather the local population gets to keep it for its own use. Yes. Crazy shit. Uh, this is, again, something that Mayon Taxes did beautifully. Um, if you had, um, say, 50% autonomy, then the money created in the province was 50% going to you and 50% going to the estates. And that was such a brilliant system because the estates could also build things. Um, so, no, I, I just, I love how much, I don't even know if it's it's influence or whatever from Mayon Taxes, but I know that the Mayon Taxes developers are ecstatic with so many of these changes. Um, and it's, yeah, I, I am too. Um, all right, final page. I'm not sure how many is on here. Will colonization impact our old world countries negatively as well? Would be cool if people actually moved from our country to the colonies we make or even other countries make. Yes. Whether this is a yes to the start or the end, I don't know. But um, colonization somewhat confirmed as a system that takes population from one place and puts it in another. And... That is the colonization system I was after. Let's go. Um, it sounds interesting. When you talk about tracing proximity via major rivers, it assumes it's something the game does automatically. Um, and uh, always calculating the shortest proximity via any applicable route. It's basically, yes, it's tracing the cheapest distance automatically. Whether cheapest means shortest time distance or... Uh, cheapest cost difference? Ambiguous. Maybe. We'll see. And we already know that proximity, uh, sorry, major rivers are not going to be navigable. Uh, whether you like that or not, it's personal preference. I know a lot of people do love navigable rivers. I'm personally of the opinion that navies shouldn't be allowed into rivers, but troops shouldn't be able to cross. And I think I've said that plenty of times. Uh, and here, um, there are no building slots in the game, which is something that I was talking about up uh, above. No building slots in the game kind of... Well, I mean, it's, it doesn't imply it confirms an entirely new building system. Um, whether it is something along the lines of Victoria 3, where we have um, infinite building slots, I guess, and they can be upgraded over time, I... I who knows? Um, there is something new here, but we do know we are going to be able to build a bailiff. That is one building that has been confirmed. So there is a building system. 
uh, but there are no slots. So I guess we can go back to the guesswork to see, you know, what we think those uh, that system might be. How about the nobles added? If the player moves or promotes them manually, uh, they are moved or promoted automatically, or they appear from thin air. So they promote over time. I say uh, if you build a bailiff in an exclave, then you will be starting to see uh, some of the peasantry promoted into nobility. Our check lines on the map roads. Um, he's talking uh, about these lines here. We already went over them. Yes, they are. Uh, will low control result in secession if there's attack in the area? Could be rather likely. Uh, why does the power of the nobles is so low on all the screenshots? It's a bit worrying. Again, this is like pre-alpha, I guess. Certainly pre-beta. Um, so values are 100% unbalanced. Although, I, I say that, but alpha and beta, they really don't have much meaning anymore. Um, so, they're in a pre-announcement stage, let's say. Uh, he loves that he's taken some inspiration from the criminally overlooked Imperator 2.0. Um, yeah, he's talking about the cities, right? He's talking about settlement into uh, city, sorry, into town, into city, is basically what we have in Imperator. But yeah, it came in 1.2, the Cicero patch, and that was, in my opinion, where Imperator became amazing. Um, but yeah, no, he's right, it was Imperator 1.2, the Cicero patch. Uh, will controlling or utilizing lakes also be a factor for proximity calculation? Yes. Th this is why uh, a while back when I had mentioned about um, the Great Lakes in America, we could see that there were sea tile zones in there and also in the Caspian. Um, it also looks like we're also just getting all lakes uh, as proximity issues or calculations. Uh, and if we go here, this lake here gonna be used for proximity that's kind of awesome uh finland stay winning you've got to so many lakes um it's it's yeah make use of those they're very yeah if they're useful uh it's possible with capital yes um I, i'm not sure this one really needed a uh a response that kind of seems to me at least to be a bit of a obvious yes but yeah who knows um but yeah, uh, there is uh, one more thing that I want to uh, touch on before we go. Uh, and that is this comment here as well. Um, Alvaro here talking uh, about, uh, in, a, in a comment in a thread, where someone was complaining that towns and cities should not make food production fall. Um, and there was a reply here that uh, Johan has confirmed all of the above. It's game and an extraction. You can't have locations small enough to represent the size of a city. Cities don't produce food, they consume it, and this is what this represents. The farmlands around this uh, feed the city, just like you say. It's realistic and works pretty well in Imperator. Otherwise, uh, what you would have is unlimited growth in food production, since everyone produced more food than what they consume, which is stupid. Uh, it won't even be about food production. It will. It's just a matter that more nobles, clergy, and burghers will eat all the food production surplus that rural lands would have. And this is just straight up confirmed. Uh, but yeah, essentially this thread is saying that this uh, this tile, this location of the city of Stockholm should also make food um, instead of, you know, in Imperator where food just is not made in anything higher than a city. Um, but yeah, no, that's, that's it, basically. Um, just wanted to throw out these um, things to talk about, to look at. Um, I will, of course, continue to follow the development of Project Caesar E5, and um, I think we're we're getting something pretty special here. So I don't know. Um, I'm a man who has already got maximum hype, but every time Tinto talks talks about something, that I just find an additional bit of hype that I did not previously think was possible to have. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.